This just in, your good neighbor is back in the news. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Airing of Grievances. It's uh, Eric Raymer and Robert Grieve. Always nice to have you along with us today. Now, if this is your first time, maybe you tripped accidentally and found our channel, uh, do us a favor, if you would, please. Click that subscribe button because you're going to want to come back time after time after time again as we produce new content every single Saturday morning at 9.30 a.m. The Airing of Grievances premieres if you join us during one of those premieres, you can, uh, how does it look? You can do that. Uh, <laughs> you can chat with us live as we are always present live in the premiere to uh, answer any questions and you just basically say good morning. Yeah. That's always nice. Uh, and of course, uh, if you're a regular or you're new, doesn't matter, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. That is always a uh, help to YouTube to let them know that, hey, you know what, there's something going on here that's worth sharing. And boy, howdy, Rob. YouTube has been sharing our stuff in the recent weeks and months. Yeah, 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 it yeah. has. And uh, f please feel free to leave a comment, too. We monitor all the comments, reply when we can. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people have reached out to me to ask me about a specific tool that I was referencing yeah. or a, a, a report that we referenced and send it off. Whatever help we can be, that that's the that's what we're here for. Absolutely. That's why we do it. Yeah, yeah. So, with that being said, Rob, happy Saturday to you. To you, my dear friends. Thanks for tuning in, spending some time with us this morning. God bless you. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, hold on for just a moment. This just in: your good neighbor is back in the news. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's true. Uh, yeah. The uh, the folks who use the title like a good neighbor uh, are back in the news again, and we were we're, we're going to peel back the layers on this, and it's kind of the the ignition point for a greater conversation. Yes, and so and and I saw this headline a few different times in different publications that I subscribe to. Uh, so I just figured I'd pull the original one, uh, which was uh, uh, written by Insurance Business America with a headline of State Farm Facing Class Action Lawsuit. State Farm Facing a Class Action Lawsuit. By the way, this article will be linked right below. That way we know, you know, that uh, we are reporting the news and uh, not just making this up for any reason. Yeah, and before I get into the article, I want to give a shout out to Jerry in Illinois, my new friend, for sending me a care package. Thank you so very much, brother. You made my day. Jerry, uh, wow, I loved loved the uh, the sentiment of that and uh, of those. Uh, Here's a sticky note. Thank God for people like you, Jerry. Uh, so thanks, Jerry. Appreciate that. And we thank God for you as well. It's, Amen. Uh, it's an important message to get out that if you care about your guests, uh, like we do, that uh, there are some players in the industry that make it challenging for them, but we are here to do our very best to get the situation right and take care of it the way that it should be. So with that being the case, let's go ahead and talk about this. Uh, State Farm is uh, facing a class action lawsuit according to Insurance Business America. Yeah. And one thing to know is, is uh, I'm not necessarily picking on State Farm. Not uh, at all. It's, it's just they keep coming up, and, and it, it's consistent with what I experience here in, in the Colorado and, and several of the body shops I know experience here in Colorado. Um, but it's not, while this article and this lawsuit is directed at State Farm, there's several insurance companies that this could apply to. And while this article is also focusing on one instance in a, in a case, in several cases now, uh, in Florida, it is also, uh, like you said, observed elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. 
So uh, State Farm has been hit with a class action lawsuit over allegations that it refused to cover the repair cost of repairs for luxury vehicles. I would add that it doesn't really matter if it's a luxury vehicle or not, but this one happens to be. So. Okay. <laughs> We're just reporting the news. That's all. It's, yeah. it's just what I've come across. Okay. Uh, this person's uh, vehicle was damaged uh, May of 2022, right. which prompted them to seek uh, repairs. They called the Porsche dealer and then was referred to a local Porsche certified collision shop. Excellent referral. Nice. Excellent referral. Yes. Because uh, Porsche has got a very good certification program. It's very expensive to be part of but they're going to fix it right. You, you can just trust that they're, they're going to do the right job. And you have the manufacturer back into repairs. So We talk about that a lot here. Yeah. Um, and so they wanted to, to use the uh, uh, certified shop to ensure the repairs were conducted in accordance with manufacturer specifications and to preserve the vehicle's warranty according to the lawsuit. Brilliant. Two thumbs up. Yep, Perfect. absolutely. The recommended shop provided an estimate of $8,300 for necessary repairs that was allegedly rejected by State Farm. $8,300 on this car is not, a, not the, a lot of money. It's the equivalent of a scratch. Yeah, it's not a lot of money. Um, and this was a Porsche, uh, an electric Porsche. Electric Porsche 2022, Ty Taycan, I think is what they call yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure what the repairs were, but that's not a very big number. Right. Um, in, in today's world of getting cars fixed. Instead, the insurance giant created its own estimate of $6,200, so that's some $2,000 difference. Uh, for damages, uh, the lawsuit claimed based on alternative labor hourly rates that are not representative of the prices charged by certified repair facilities. Mm. So we got a $2,000 difference, uh, probably plus a deductible. Can we call it 25% uh, separation? It's usually that. Yeah. So according to the suit, State Farm offered to pay only its estimated amount minus a five hundred dollar deductible. So that's you know the five hundred is, is the responsibility anyway, so it's two thousand dollars. Right. Uh, they were consequently forced to cover the difference between the estimate and the actual repair costs. This goes on every day now, folks. The insurance companies are doing everything they can not to pay, yet the prices for everything in business, whatever business, the coffee shop down the sure, street, yeah. uh, the, the dentist, restaurant. everybody, yeah. the costs are just skyrocketing and it has rates have to go up. The insurance company doesn't recognize that. They want to pay something less than that and the consumer is landing up picking up the difference. Right. There's ways to fight that. We have videos to talk about that. Uh, so, you, you know, you're not left with no options right. in most cases. The initial breach of contract complaint was filed against State Farm in August of 2022 with regards to this incident. However, lawyers said they discovered evidence suggesting that State Farm has consistently failed to honor the policy requirements for determining collision benefits on high, high value vehicles. Hmm. A pattern. Yep. And those it's the two thousand dollar difference that they didn't want to budge on, led to exposing a potential pattern, which is going to be a much larger number. <laughs> if they would like my phone number, I'd be happy to provide it. Because, As a consultant, because my guests have gone through this very same thing yeah. over and over and over, and for way more than two thousand dollars difference. We have documentation of that. For decades yeah and in Colorado the, the this particular policy is the only one that I'm aware of that doesn't have an appraisal clause for repairing a vehicle and that means you've got no way to fight them unless you sue them and that's uh, incredibly expensive and time-consuming but when that lawyer uncovers a pattern, a pattern yeah now it becomes a whole lot less expensive for you and other people can join in and bear the expense and take take on the uh, take on a thing. So trust, trust us when we say that we will keep our fingers on the pulse of this case yeah. and uh, let you know if anything develops that uh, you might want to participate in. It's uh, so a couple of interesting things. Uh, we had a State Farm 
family uh, hail claim. Sure. So the wife and the husband yep. and the daughter, all three cars got hit with hail. Oh, I see. Okay. The daughter has her own policy. Husband and wife are on another policy. Okay. The local people came out on the husband and wife's policy, and it was not good. Did what they do. Yeah, it was not good. However, let me let me back you up for just a minute. When you say it was not good, did they underwrite the? They uh, do what they did. What they do. They short paid. Just, just like in this article. Okay. Uh, and and you know one of those cars is Cadillac, another one's an e-tron, uh, Audi e-tron. So kind of following suit with what's going on here. Yes. Okay. Now the other car. The other car, which you can't remember what kind of car it is, but it's it's not one of those two. Okay. Um, that claim got settled through the national chain, the national office. Yeah. Claims, as opposed to being pushed down to the local level and having the local level handle it. Okay. So while the husband and wife were potentially thousands of dollars out of pocket to get their vehicle repaired, the daughter, they paid almost to the penny, first time. Same company. Same company. Same company. So the parents said, hey, wait a minute, naturally, right? Right. And all of a sudden... Somehow it went to this national team and they paid it in full. So here's, you know, I don't know what triggers that it goes to national or it goes to local. And it's the same thing with travelers. Yeah, you- same thing with travelers. The local people do not want to have business conducted at Nylons. And they'll do anything they can to make it hard and punish the consumer by, you know, types of parts to be used delaying all of it all of it and uh yeah it's the national people which it's very strange to me the the way this is all working but it's a story and it's what's going on and uh if there's a way that if you're having a problem with a local adjusting company for the for the insurance company take it see if you can get it up to the national level yeah. Maybe somebody can, can take a look at it there, and, and, and a lot of your problems are solved. You know, and, and it strikes me, Rob, as we're talking about this, and that was one of the first questions that I asked, was, yeah. was uh, how do you trigger that national entity to step in? And, and we don't have a good answer for that. No. How, however, uh, when you are struggling with, and you disagree with the, the settlement offer from uh, the local team, you not only have the option to ask for, uh, you know, taking it, escalating it up to the, a national level, but you also have the opportunity to ask them, uh, and you can ask the, the local insurer, do you think this is a good thing for me to just reach out to the Department of Insurance in, in your local state? Let me get uh, their opinion on how this is being handled. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that will change their position if not their disposition in the matter it doesn't mean they're in some get... cases some cases not and, yeah. the, and the department may not be able to get involved in any one particular case right. but you're alerting them of trends with different companies that's right which may change things for others if you're that kind of person that wants to to, to work on the greater good yeah yeah and trends is another word for patterns and patterns are what brings you the news today. Yes. Yeah. So So that's what I have for you today. I want to make it short and sweet. I want to tell you how much I appreciate you and all the people that are reaching out. And, uh, you know, Jerry, thank you very, very much. I love this. Awesome. <laughs> you know, somebody's <laughs> going to ask, where can we get some of those? So, yeah, yeah. Jerry, if you're watching this. Yeah. Put a little uh, comment in there drop and a comment uh, in. We'll, uh, we'll promote it for you. <laughs> Anyway. Thank you guys for guys for watching. We appreciate you and uh, Rob, happy Saturday. Happy Saturday to you. Have an amazing week. I'm so looking forward to seeing you again next week. I hope you found value. God bless.